Ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are going to look at a program that I can only call, this one is freaking cool. This one is called Soundly, and it's been around for quite a while, to be honest, but it is new to me. And basically, it boils down, I was looking for some sound effects. I was looking for a tool for creating sound effects. Instead, I found Soundly, and the best way I can describe Soundly is this is Mega Scans slash Quixel Bridge for audio files. That's the entire idea behind it. Soundly is a subscription service with a bunch of audio files, but they also have a very generous free version. And on top of that, it is a search engine database slash tool for handling sound files, including your own local files that can manage it for you, or obviously all the cloud-based stuff they have. So we're going to check out Soundly. I'm gonna show you demonstrations first off, and then we'll get back to some of the details about Soundly itself. So first off, Soundly, here you can see it in action. It's pretty straightforward. You've got your libraries. You can have local libraries, all your own stuff stored. Uh, you can have something, something like 2,500 sound effects in the free version. Also, the cloud side of things, you get access to Soundly's free database. And Soundly's free database is big. So let's say you want some bullet sounds. You can see the, the white stuff is the stuff that you're getting for free. And then we have all of the other stuff available there. So let's say I wanted some ambient city noises. I could just come up here. I'll type search for city. And here you can see the kind of results that you are getting for free. And again, you can use these commercially. We'll get back to those details in just a second. So once you're up and going and you have what you like, what I could do is I come in here and I could pick a sound effect. So let's do one that's actually kind of on the high end. So here we see uh, Brussels Transit. And here you can hear the sound effect in action. So various different noises. Um, you've got control over the exact timeline here. But the cool thing here is you can see this guy has five channels available to it. Well, we can toggle off to a particular channel so say we just wanted this little area right here, and we go play. So there we've got the sound. I don't, I don't particularly know what that was. But we can narrow it down to a single channel, or we could grab all the channels, like so, and get up. Hmm. Do I have to click? I think I might have to click. No, nope. control click. Oh, shift click. So I can bring all the channels back like so, and I can pull across the multiple ones that I want to bring out, or what I can do is I say, okay, mix this down to mono. So boom, like that. And so there is my individual clip. The same thing, I can do right click, and we do some, some minimalist stuff. So I can reverse it, I can normalize the sound, I, and so on. But I'm gonna stick with this single mono channel out. So what can I do with this now? Well, there's a couple of really cool things I could do. I can actually literally just grab this guy here, and I could bring over a uh, Explorer or Finder window. This guy's available for Mac and Windows. And I just basically grab the section I want, drag it into the uh, Finder window, and then what you're gonna see is there, it created a new waveform of just that selected area, like so. All right, another thing I could do, let's go pick a different sound for this demo. So let's go here, say you're working on a video game, I wanna have AK-47. So here's my AK-47. It's two bursts of bullets, like so. All right, so I decide, okay, I only really need this check section right here. And I want to bring this out to say uh, a DAW of choice or uh, an editor. Well, I've already set up uh, a, an editor version, but I'm going to show you here. Right now, I don't have anything running. I'm going to go ahead and load up a copy of the DAW Reaper, like so. So Reaper is now um, running. So here's Reaper. Well, you'll notice as soon as I loaded Reaper up, we got this new button over here for sending to Reaper. Uh, so you can send it over to your DAW, no problem at all. So let's shut that back down. Or another thing that I've done is I've set up, oh, now that my Reaper, now that my DAW is closed, it goes away, by the way. I also set up Audacity. So we got Audacity option over here. I can click that, and there you see the sound is brought over to add Audacity for editing. Uh, at the same time, I could literally just drag it out as a file, drop it on my game engine of choice, Unreal Engine, Unity, Godot, or whatever, and it will be brought into those tools as well. And here you can see it's the clip. So what this enables you to do basically is search for, from a huge database of sounds, uh, you can search for uh, a variety of different things. And as you can see here, the database uh, for free stuff is, let me defilter this. Uh, the database of free stuff is pretty solid. As you can see, uh, there's also a ton of commercial stuff. Another neat thing is if you actually subscribe to them, you can request sounds and they'll potentially go out and source them for you as part of your subscription. But there's, again, over a thousand free sounds here. And then you can also have your own local database, which it will search through as well. They advertise that this got smart AI in the searching. You've got uh, fine-tuned controls over how uh, things could be searched for. Uh, and you can also do thesaurus-based search. 
So you can have it search for similar. So aircraft and airplane will match. So it's got smart searching here as well. Um, so if you're looking for something, you don't have to be super precise with the wording. It's got, again, a thesaurus mode here. You can actually even have translate from different languages. I'm not sure how many languages. It supports a pretty solid number of languages. All right, there you go. Uh, so you've got fine-tuned control over how the search itself should behave. So there's a couple of ways you can look at this. So you could look at it basically as an organizational tool for managing your own local sound effects up to, I think, 2,500 in the, uh, the free license version. Or you can look at this as a giant database of sounds, your one-stop shop for sounds. And then you can pull in and grab the extracts you want. And if you want, if you're doing, um, say, a lot of file system stuff, so I could do them down here. And if I want individual sounds, so here I've got my Explorer or Finder window open up over there. And I want some weather effects, like so I come down here and I'm going to search for thunder, da, 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 thunder. And then I got all my various different results over here. I can just grab the bits I want and bring it over. So if you need to bring in and handle a lot of different sounds or a lot of different segments of sounds, you can do so. By the way, you can also do a um, control, or a, I guess it's command A, and copy the entire sound effect over uh, like so. So why did you not caught oh, There we go. Oh, I got all these things. Keep both, keep both, keep both. I'm still getting used to multi-monitor support on a Mac. But as you can see, uh, you can have it in dock mode. So if you had your game engine up here and you're just bringing in the sound effects you need, you can pull them in super quick, super simple. Really, I'm just impressed by how well this tool works. It's one of those tools that's just sort of, I need sound effects. I need to manage my sound effects. Please make my life easy. And that's what it does. That's why I'm so impressed by this one. It is freaking um, amazing at what it does. And like I said, the pricing is quite reasonable. We'll get back to that in just a second. The other really cool thing it does, and unfortunately, this is an add-on only feature. So you've got to uh, have a plan to get this, is there are a number of different add-ons. So for example, Free Sounds, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's a great repository of people recording and releasing free sounds. Available at freesounds.org. Highly recommend you check it out. Well, you could integrate that into your search. So when you come over here, you could have on the cloud side of things, you could have free sound as a searchable option as well. And the whole search engine will work on top of these various different other sources. You can also set up cloud drives. Uh, we'll get to that over here in the settings. The settings are also quite important. So you can set up a variety of different DAWs to work with it. So Pro Tours, Repros, uh, Nuendo, Cubase, and Logic can all be set up. Uh, at the same time, I set up an external tool. In this case, Audacity was set up this way. It's any tool that has an open with kind of functionality you can use as an external editor. There's also functionality here for setting up Premiere and so on. Uh, there's a variety of different storage-based options here. So if you're using, uh, they, if you subscribe to them, you get 10 gigs on their account. You would also set it up to work with S3 or Google Drive. So if you have a ton of sound effects, uh, they can handle it as well. Unfortunately, again, this is a pro only feature there. Um, another thing, probably the last thing that I'd want you to be aware of, you got control also over uh, how much information is shown on the particular files. And then over here, there's this export. And this is one of those things I ran into. By default, I think it was at 24-bit audio, which did not work with Unreal Engine, which is why I originally downloaded this guy. Uh, you can have it pulled down right here. Another cool thing here, is when you're pulling the sounds out. So let's go back uh, when we were in dock mode. I'll show you that in a sec. So I could say, all right, I want to have everything prefixed with the name SFX. So then when I go back to something like dock mode and I pick a little clip of sound. So let's, let's do uh, this chunk right here. We'll bring that out. You're going to notice oh, now we get SFX underscore. So you've got control over how the naming will work and so on. It's just an all round. It's a tool that does exactly what it sets up to do. It gives you a nice, generous, free version. So even if you just want to look at this as access to a thousand plus uh, free files for your own game or to organize your own assets, again, a lot like Quixel uh, Bridge does gives you a whole bunch of free stuff as well. Uh, on that level alone, this tool is definitely worth checking out. Uh, but if you're doing a lot of sound effects sourcing, it, it may be worthwhile to you as well. So it's available, again, Windows and Mac. A great way to organize things. It's got intelligent search built on top of it. Um, a number of features on the, for the Pro version as well. Uh, and then we'll get down here. Here's the pricing. So the free version includes up to 2,500 local files, the free library, uh, and so on. And then you get up to the $15 a month. Uh, you get 10 gigs of cloud storage, all of their files, so the full access to their library, um, and then all of the various different add-ons as well, whereas you don't get the add-ons with the free version. And then weirdly enough, for 
$10, you can get 24 hours worth of access, which actually could make sense for you. If you knew you needed a whole bunch of sounds for a particular project and you knew you could grab them all at once for like 10 bucks, you can get access there. Um, and you do actually continue to have legal rights to them after the fact. That's obviously the last question we have going here after the pricing is can I use these in a video game or can I use these commercially? And the libraries are clear for commercial use. Now, one thing to be aware of though, is if you do use the pro version and you access that free sounds library of sounds, uh, they are under the CC0 license. Uh, so make sure that you are compliant with that. Um, so you gotta make sure, oh, be sure to choose CC only uh, so you can actually control which one it'll show you. But if you show the entire thing, it could be some of the stuff in free sounds has an attribution license. So if you use it in your game, you got to put them in the credits type thing. Uh, so be careful when you're opening there. But when you're dealing with their free libraries, yes, they are available uh, for commercial use. You can actually use these in a project. Um, so definitely a cool project in that regard. Uh, everything is cleared for uh, commercial use. This includes podcasts, films, video games, etc. Uh, so again, the only thing you really got to check out for is if you use that free sound library uh, that you're compliant with it as well. And free sounds is really actually quite awesome. So if you haven't already, it's freesound.org uh, available right here. If you if it's completely new to you, uh, it's definitely worth checking out. There's a huge amount of sounds on here, but the thing that you'll find is there's not really a great amount of curation or search engine. So even having a search engine across this gigantic library of sounds. So let's again, let's search for the AK-47 and let's see how many AK-47 hits we got. We got 69 pages. We got 2,657 sounds, or 2,656 sounds matching that. So if you've never checked out freesound.org, it's an awesome resource. And the cool thing here is if you are using Soundly, uh, the pro version at least, uh, you can actually have this as kind of a, a database on top of that functionality. There's a couple other ones here. There's one for medieval sounds, uh, firearm library, golden era sound library. These are from various different sources. Um, yeah, so that's, that is Soundly. Uh, again, the free version is perfectly usable. You could use these in your own title. So if you are struggling to find uh, some sound effects for your game, it's a good place to start. If you've got a huge library of sound effects and you just need something to organize them, another great place to start. And uh, if you're looking for like a one-stop shop for sound effects, well, the pro version may be worth picking up. So if you used Soundly before, what do you think? Let me know. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.